However, the police and military could not say how many women or children were among the dead. As it relates to bodies that we currently have, there are 73 bodies that we have. 15, as Minister of Oz indicated, are currently being processed for burial. And there's doubt about whether three of the dead fell during or before the operation on Monday. Information Minister Darrell Vaughan says before they are buried, post-mortems will be done and each one identified. He says the Prime Minister will ensure that an investigation is done to establish whether the operation was properly conducted. These vary from mistreatment of citizens to innocent persons being killed. The government is committed and insistent that the rights of citizens be respected and observed. An office of the public defender will also be set up in Tivoli Gardens and Denham Town so residents can report concerns immediately. As it relates to the number of weapons the police have seized during their five-day operation, the figure has moved from four to six. Currently, we can account for six firearms, four rifles and two pistols, and close to 8,000 rounds of ammunition, almost 8,000 rounds of assorted ammunition. The assistant commissioner could not tell how many of that number was found in Tivoli Gardens and Denham Town. But from what the assistant commissioner said, they are sure to find more firearms. The operation is continuing, as you know, and we're endeavoring to recover as many of those arms that we are quite certain some still remain in the community and the area of operation. Kirk Wright, TVJ News. And there is little information this evening from the security forces about the circumstances in which the brother of a former government minister was killed in the Kirkland Heights area of Red Hill St. Andrew early this morning. He was killed in an operation that is thought to be related to the search for Christopher Dudas Koch. Archibald Gordon reports. There were clear signs something serious had gone down when we got to the Kirkland Heights location in Red Hills where Kirk Clark, the brother of former government minister Claude Clark, had met his demise. The police provided little information about the circumstances of his death. They and soldiers had cordoned off the property and they were keeping everyone at bay as they moved in and out of the area with nary a word to the media and much to the annoyance of residents who said Mr. Clark did not deserve this. We can't go there for the city man, right? For last night, they kill him a soldier, black out the place. And nobody can go for the city. Everybody stand by the so not in the family them. They want the PCC and in daughter there, so and in daughter can't see him. Mr. Clark was a good man in the area. Good, good man. I last year, I said, I'm going to talk to the man. I said, I'm going to have a nice shirt for your birthday. And he just laughed. What did I kill Mr. Clark for? Eh? What did I kill him for? Soon, familiar faces like the head of human rights group, Jamaicans for Justice, Dr. Carolyn Gomes, and the member of parliament, Andrew Gallimore, would show up on scene. But it appeared they too were getting little information about the circumstances in which Mr. Clark was killed. I understand that there was an operation at maybe 2 o'clock in the morning involving a lot of uh, soldiers, helicopter, etc. And I, I was advised this morning that Mr. Clark's home was forcibly entered and that he was shot. Um, I'm very curious to find out the circumstances under which that has occurred and I am hoping that a thorough investigation will take place that will explain to Jamaica how the security forces are using the powers that they have been given. The police have not said much either about the killing of Mr. Clark. The Jamaica Constabulary Force sent out a one-paragraph release saying a joint police-military operation was conducted in Kirkland Heights at approximately 2.45 this morning. The release said four members of the Jamaica Defense Force were shot and injured and one civilian killed. The release also said a firearm was seized. The Deputy Commissioner of Police, Glenmore Hines, would provide just as little information when asked about the shooting at a press briefing this afternoon. There was a joint police military operation in East Kirkenheit. One uh, person was killed, uh, one firearm recovered. The matter is now the subject of an investigation by the Bureau of Special Investigations. 
and I am constrained to say anything more at this time, not, certainly not until the BSI has reported to us. In the absence of official information, there are varied reports about how and why Mr. Clark was killed. Our sources tell us he was killed during a military-led operation in search of Christopher Dudus Koch. It's widely suspected that the security forces were hot on the heels of Mr. Koch, whose sources say may have been in the area at the time of the operation. The security forces were reportedly engaged in a firefight with men in a house said to be owned by Mr. Koch. But how exactly Mr. Clark came to be shot is still not apparent. Archibald Gordon, TVJ News. And while we were in Tivoli Gardens this morning, many residents of the Jamaica Labour Party stronghold expressed deep anger at their Member of Parliament, Prime Minister Bruce Golding. Here is Kerry Ann Lee. Tivoli Gardens and the Jamaica Labour Party are almost synonymous. Having been represented in Parliament by almost every leader of the JLP since independence, the community has been the party's strongest and most identifiable garrison. Today, the utterances from some of its residents belied that fact. I'm back against the wall. I will know ourselves now. Now, Bruce, Bruce, go on. I don't we're dead with a wire. That was an impromptu protest, the message they clearly wanted the media to leave the community with. But they were not alone. Further into Tivoli Gardens, people openly expressed anger at the MP who's been representing them since Edward Siaga gave up the seat in 2005. They say PM Golding, the prodigal son who returned to the Labour Party and was given its most powerful seat, has let them down. Some rest the blame for what happened this week squarely at his feet. When I was a Jews going again, we don't we both. Look at anger the people there at Tivoli Garden. Me never old from Sunday. I mean, just can't come. I just can't walk by and down. Then go, then go, my son. He made that dumb and to ice cream. I take exam. He's resigned. Me done. He can't get my vote and my family vote again. Me done with Bruce Golden. And former leader of the Jamaica Labour Party and Prime Minister Edward Siaga has blasted Prime Minister Bruce Golding and says it would be appropriate for him to resign. Mr. Siaga, who served as MP for West Kingston for 43 years, says this week's police military operation in Tivoli Gardens was totally unjustified. He was speaking with TVJ's Earl Moxham. Mr. Siaga, can we start with your own characterization of what has happened in Tivoli in terms of the police military operations under the state of emergency? As of today, the most important or the, most, the greatest difficulty that exists there is that the people are still in captivity and still cannot get out to buy food. And this is now going the third or fourth day. People in poor circumstances don't buy food for a week. They buy for two days because they don't have anywhere to put it, even if they have a little fridge is small, so that they have to go out and buy every couple of days. Now, those two days are gone, and the people are hungry and they can't buy, get to buy any food. You have little children, you have babies, you have medication that have to be bought. When this uh, the previous episode in 2001 took place, four people died because they couldn't get the medication for diabetes, the insulin. Now, this is really a sad situation, and I cannot think of any reason that could cause the government to continue with this very, very wicked act, because I can't call it anything else. It is a wicked act to keep people in captivity like that. And they must let the people go. How would you relate the ventures into Tivoli over the last day or two by uh, bodies or persons uh, respected by the public as persons who they would expect to do the right thing by the people? Well, I think Bishop's, Bishop Blair's effort has been a failure. Bishop Blair believes he can give away a bag of food for freedom. Don't work that way. People want their freedom, not a bag of food. So I just discount him altogether. As far as the public defender is concerned, he's doing his job. How far can one man go? I don't know. I'm trying to get him now to find out what has he discovered in terms of the dumping of bodies in Maypen. Because holes are being dug there, bodies are being dumped there. When a mother, after being released, wants to know what has happened to her son, and her son is...